Greg Carruth may be free, but his battle to return to a normal life is, uh, to put it mildly, far from over. We want to get some perspective from this from Larry Levine. Larry is a former federal inmate and founder of Wall Street Prison Consultants. Larry, thank you for joining us. And look, I, I do think that today people should be thinking of Sondra Adams and, and Chancellor Lee Adams, but we do need to address this about Ray Carruth. What's life going to be like for him outside of prison? He's been there for almost two decades. Uh, he is a He's a top trending topic on Twitter right now. How much of an adjustment is this going to be to a, a normal life? Well, we live right now well, we did actually until Trump was elected. I mean, we lived in a world of redemption. I'm not trying to slam the president or anything, but some people will forgive him. Some people won't. He's going to have to adjust because he's coming back to a new world. Remember, when yeah. he went in, there was no real Internet. There was no smartphones. I mean, it wasn't a digitally connected society. And like you're saying, he's all over Twitter. He doesn't have any money. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. If you look at Aaron Hernandez, when he went in, at least he had several million. O.J. Simpson got out. He had several million. This guy's coming back to nothing. And I know when he was in custody, they run you through these programs, these so-called educational programs. They give you certificates. You learn masonry, plumbing, carpentry, but he doesn't have the practical experience yeah. And a lot of the training that he got inside, it's not worth anything on the outside. I mean, somebody might feel sorry for him for celebrity's sake and give him a job, but he's going to be on a short leash with the parole office. And he's not like uh, just a regular person getting out because yeah. he's going to be under the radar, under the microscope. People are going to be watching and scrutinizing everything he does. So here's the thing. Uh, Carruth, has, he, he was pretty silent until this year, really. Uh, he didn't really speak to the media too much after being convicted. Uh, and then suddenly he started writing letters. Uh, he, he says he worries about negativity and, and hate. I mean, is it possible for someone who committed such a high-profile violent crime to be seen as reformed? I, I was a child when he actually committed the murder, and I worked in Charlotte a decade and, and later, and it, the pain was still very much there. There's still a lot of anger in that city, in that state. Uh, when you hear the name Ray Carruth, it's as if it happened yesterday, not as if it happened 20 years ago. Can well, he be seen as reformed? A lot of people, first of all, let's take society, split it in half. A lot of people are going to believe he's innocent. Look at Bill Cosby. A lot of people think that he's innocent. So half the society says he's guilty. The other half says he's innocent. So he's got to deal with the half of society that thinks he's guilty. He's going to have a stigma. He's going to have psychological issues. He's not going to be able to sleep. It all comes down to money. And really... His son, I believe his son, everybody needs their parents, despite whatever it is. Even kids that are being abused still love their parents. His son and I guess his son's grandmother are going to be his rock. Give him maybe a base of operations. He got picked up by a relative, so he's got family yeah. out there. But he's going to have to get a job. I mean, who's going to hire him in for what? Maybe, I mean, the parole office, they say they're going to get you some type of employment doing fast food, working at Home Depot or something. I know they hire felons or that other you, big box store. You, you know, Larry, but, real quick, you mentioned Chancellor, though. And do you think that that, that mitigates it a little bit? Because uh, according to why he was convicted, the whole reason why Sharika Adams is not here today is because Ray Carruth didn't want Chancellor to be alive. He wanted him dead. And That kid and is still, you, let's, you know what, hold on. No, no, I'm it's asking, do you still, think that mitigates it, the relationship? It's still his father. Afterwards? That kid is going to want, the kid has read all kinds of BS about his father for years. He knows who dad is. He knows what dad did. Dad hasn't admitted that he did it. That kid has been looking forward to dad getting out of prison for years. So it'll go either way. Either the kid will love him, they'll bond together, or it's going to create friction. But I tend to see that this kid needs his father. And maybe that's what he needs, and he could use that to rebuild a relationship and rebuild his life. Everybody coming out of prison needs something. They need hope. And I believe yeah. that reality hit him. This is why all of a sudden he started conversing with people just before he got out. He knew he was going to hit the streets, and he needed to reconnect.
and here he is today. Larry Levine, thank you so much for your insight. Appreciate that there. Everybody needs a little bit of hope. That is so right. So look. We